Hello and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2. We're here on our train that is rolling into our new uh, train station passenger area in Montgomery. And in this video, we'll be focusing a little bit more on passenger trains by redoing the Jackson Scottsdale train station a little bit so we get all the platforms connected finally. And then we will also touch on some more cargo connections to the cargo hub. So everything in Montgomery has been going pretty well so far actually. If we take a look at our street layers, our street traffic layer, uh, we really have no traffic in the city and the areas where we do are areas where it's getting cleaned up or much better than it was before. We no longer have this line of traffic all the way out to the end of the city. And over here was a bit of a traffic jam because we had so many stations on this bus stop. So we just added a second one over here to relieve some of the pressure on this road. So we don't end up with lines of buses waiting for this uh, one bus stop. But other than that, Montgomery is now uh, flowing and working pretty well so far. So I'm happy to move on from this city. And so the first thing we're going to tackle in this video is setting up our tracks so that they connect to every platform at our Jackson Scottsdale station. This side might not be too hard, uh, or at least it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, we just have to deal with two sets of tracks coming in here. And then this side is going to be a little trickier because we don't have quite as much space because we do have this turn for our track that heads up to Montgomery, but I still don't see this being too much of an issue. So for this side, we will start off by simply deleting all of these tracks and we'll delete them all the way back until uh, pretty much where these signals are because I believe that's where our last crossover happens. And so essentially after this point, all the trains should be able to cross over to whatever uh, set of tracks they'll need in order to get into their respective platform. So we'll just have to extend these all out to be the same distance. So I'll have this like that. And I think the way we're going to organize this is these two tracks are going to split into these four uh, platforms here. And then these two tracks here are going to split into these four over on this side. All right, and so now that we have all this in here, we can drag our tracks along like so. We'll have those connect there. These will come over and I suppose we could make these even longer. They don't necessarily have to uh, come in so close. Although it might be a little hard to get this extended that far out, but I think that's enough space there. We'll just bring this over pretty much as far as we can. So I think about there's good. And then we'll just have uh, crossovers here to allow the trains to come in and out as they need. And we'll actually give them as much space as possible. And so we'll end up with something like this. So then our next set of tracks, those are gonna have to come up and connect over here. But again, I think we'll extend these tracks out just a bit farther to give them some space. And then now that we've done that, we can bring these over just like that. And then somehow we'll merge these in here as well. So now that we got this, let's just create our crossovers again. And we'll try to match it with the other ones, just so it looks good. And so I think this should work. Again, I'm not too familiar with uh, doing all these train junctions, especially in the stations. So I think it should work, because any train coming in this way, uh, they get the opportunity to switch tracks all the way back here. Although that probably rarely ever happens. And then here's where the big switch is, where uh, they can switch to any of these four tracks 
and then from there they can get into any platform that they need to. Now in terms of signaling, this is where I'm pretty much completely lost, uh, so I'll just add these uh, path signals here, and they're not going to be one way so that trains can get into any platform, but now it shows that we're getting issues reaching the alternate platforms, and so this is where we're going to have to start figuring out what's wrong with what we just made. So now it seems like a setup like this works, where we have all of our signals over here, but I'm not sure if that's exactly how this whole thing works. I guess we'll have to let it play. Um, I know for sure we definitely don't want signals here and here, because that's how we got blocked and uh, essentially gridlocked all of our trains in here before. But I think we can maybe let this play and see if our trains get stuck, see if we get any sort of good flow of train traffic into this end, and then if this does work, we can pretty much just repeat that over on uh, this end of the station. Alright, and so this seems to be working out so far. We've had a couple of trains come in here. We have these two trains leaving at the same time, as well as this one coming in here, and it doesn't seem like any of it is stopping, so I suppose this is what we want. Now this one's stopping just because this one's coming straight on, so that makes sense, but I guess we have it working, so... I guess when it comes into situations like this, especially at a station, less is more for signals, at least in this game. Um, but let me know if this is correct. I suppose we'll find out as we continue if we get uh, error notifications or anything like that. But as long as this works, I'm happy to leave it. And we can pretty much just duplicate that same thing over on this end. And so for this side of our uh, station at Jackson Scottsdale, we'll delete all these. And this set of tracks will be pulling back pretty far uh, so we can get a pretty clean run up so we can set all of this up. All right, and so this is how we ended up uh, merging our lines here. Uh, the speed limit actually isn't too terrible on this curve. It does go down to 90 miles an hour, but then again, these trains will be coming into the station, so that's not too big of an issue there. So then next, I believe we just need to... Well, first, maybe let's just connect this rail all the way over just so we have a, a nice sort of reference point. And then we'll drag all of our tracks out like so. So we'll have those here like this. And then here's where we're going to essentially cut across all of these tracks to get our giant switch in, which is where all of these uh, trains will then pretty much decide which set of tracks they're going to go in. So uh, everything in here has been set to be a double slip switch. Uh, it should be able to reach any track from any other one coming in here. So then really it's just a matter of pulling these out far enough. So we'll do this to all eight of these tracks. So now that these have been pulled out as far as they can, let's connect these all up and hopefully it's not too bad. We really didn't give ourselves that much space, but I don't think it'll be too terrible. Let's just see uh, connecting everything together, how this goes. And so we are able to connect all these up. It's not pretty and it gets slow in some areas, but we'll just have to monitor it and make sure that uh, that slowness isn't slowing down the rest of our lines. So we still want high throughput in this area, but we'll add our crossovers in here. And now that all of those are in, uh, we should just have to put back in the signals from when we uh, deleted all this track and then right before here is where we're going to get our uh, another signal in right before the big change 
and I think that should still allow for all of the trains to get into whatever uh, platform that they need to. So we can take a look here, for example, our Jackson to Santa Clarita line. We can manage the line, and we should be able to fill out the rest of these alternate stations and this looks like it is pathing just fine to each one of those. So we'll just come through here and do the same thing for all the other lines that are coming into this area. And we'll split some of our larger lines to the new platforms all the way on the end here. And once we have that, this should start uh, working out pretty well. So now, as it turns out, we actually have uh, pretty much one platform for each one of our lines coming in here so everything is perfectly spread out now uh, we won't get too many overloaded stations now that we're not sharing any and if we hit play we should be able to let this run uh, as it was so I'm not too entirely sure what's going on here uh, pretty much everything is set up almost the exact same way as this side however these trains are getting stuck at this signal and you can see here it keeps flipping back and forth and then when I delete this sometimes it goes sometimes it doesn't and I'm really not sure where that's stemming from I don't know if maybe it's these signals here but that doesn't seem to be the case because this cell says it's waiting for a free path so maybe these can go back well now it's going so I'm not too sure what's going on there but we're creating a pretty big backup of trains here so we need to find some solution to this and I'm not sure what it is maybe if we let this train go past this signal maybe these will start to open up more uh, but I'm starting to get a little lost for what exactly we're doing here so you can see this one's also uh, blinking waiting for free path I just I I don't know what's causing that all right and so finally after quite a while of troubleshooting and experimenting and trying things out this is what I got to work so we added some signals over here because trains were just stopping over here for some reason and there was only really one or two trains over here so every time one of them would start to leave the station all the trains here would stop and wait for the train to pretty much clear its entire way out of here so we added signals to help split that up so now only uh, trains that are in this area should be blocking the traffic here um, and then another big thing we did was we split this into uh, two separate sets of tracks instead of merging them together because this one was just so high throughput that we just had endless amounts of trains backed up here and the slow throughput of this setup just wasn't working so we split our uh, Santa Clarita line over to this one and now that seems to be working well we're just getting through the sort of end of the traffic jam that we had here which is why you see these trains still stopped at signals but hopefully once we check up on it later uh, everything will be back to good and normal and so now we can move on from this and continue on to what we're going to work on uh, later and that is starting to bring more resources to the cargo hub this is something that we've been slowly working on in the background uh, because we have connected quite a few more cities to uh, the cargo hub as well as resources and you can see some of our platforms are actually getting a little bit empty and I think that's because we're starting to spread our resources very thin and I think we can take almost any line as an example such as this one we can zoom out quite a while and well maybe this one's not the best example but I've taken a look at a couple others and we can see that finances has dropped off a little bit. Nothing's really losing us a lot of money, but uh, it's not as good as it was uh, when we had fewer connections here. Now one thing we are going to do here quick is our cargo hub to San Jose and Downey line has 
tons of construction materials waiting, so we're just going to simply manage these vehicles. And I don't think we're going to add cars, but we will adjust the balance of them. So I think we'll maybe get rid of two or three box cars on each train and replace those with uh, some more flat cars just so we can slowly start to eat into all of the extra construction materials that we have waiting at the platform here. And so we'll just simply modify those. That should start to do a little bit better and we'll be able to transport a more balanced set of resources on our line that heads out that way. And so taking a look around the map at our existing industries, a lot of them are doing really well uh, and producing pretty much almost at full capacity besides maybe here and there. Um, but one easy one that I know we can fix right off the bat is our fuel refinery here. We already have another uh, one that we set up a few episodes ago, but this one we never really got all the way up to uh, maximum efficiency. And that's just because we only have one oil well over here providing for the whole line. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to set up uh, this other oil well and we might bring it in by truck now that we have a decent road connection made in this area. I think before uh, we didn't really have a well built out road network uh, when we set up this line and boats are pretty slow so I think I'd like to get this one being a truck line just so that this oil refinery is a little bit more consistent in terms of its production. And so let's simply start out by uh, grabbing one of our truck stations since this is where all of our resources are going to come in and out of. Alright, so now we have our truck station down. I think next we'll connect our road across the bridge here and then we'll upgrade this road to be a nicer road and then we'll set up our line come back detail this oil well and i'm pretty sure i'll be good to leave this video off there and so now we have our bridge coming across here let's come in and upgrade this road we'll just upgrade it all the way up until where it connects up this way I'm not too concerned about straightening out the road. This is a pretty decent path to begin with. It's not too steep anywhere, and I think the winding road helps with that as well. All right, so next step is to set up our line. We'll come in over to this road depot, and we do have space here for a drop-off, so we'll grab some tank trucks. I think we'll grab some of these tank trucks. Uh, they seem to be fairly decent in what they can carry and the speed that they move at. We'll start with 12 trucks and this will go from our oil well out here all the way over to this truck stop here. And so here comes our fleet of vehicles. We can take a look at the rate and we want that to be closer to 800. So I think we'll let these space out and then we'll just simply double uh, the vehicles that we have on here. So we'll give it some time, duplicate these, and then we'll detail up the oil well. All right, and so coming back to here, uh, we have to detail this oil well and we'll try to do it in a way that makes it seem like it fits along the riverside here. So I think this will be a bit of a challenge. We're not gonna go too crazy with it because it is just a single detached oil well, but we'll start off as usual by flattening the land around so our assets sit flush. And then we do have all these oil pumps, so I think maybe we'll try to align them with these ones and we'll get them set up right across from each other. And so we got these six over here and over here, we'll do the same thing, but I think we'll offset them since the spacing isn't quite as good on this side. So we'll just do something like that. And that leaves us with a nice area 
that we can come around and fence in. And so I think this fence uh, gives us a nice boundary. It connects to these openings here, so it's still possible that something or someone can drive through this area. We'll come through with our paint tools and we'll find the dirt and get that in here. And so then next what we want to do is we want to try to match whatever's already here and I think it's probably some kind of gravel or an asphalt. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's probably one of these. So yeah, it appears to be this gravel. So we'll come through and we'll paint sort of the base of these with gravel. And the next thing that we're going to want to do is bring the strength way down on this, grab this lighter gravel color, and then we'll pretty much just come through and lightly dot this around. Because you can see it's sort of in some spots over here. And then we'll bring the brush size down and we'll do that along here. And this will just drag back and forth a bit so we can start to see these little patches of gravel. And then lastly, just to get that oil look, we'll come all the way over to this dirty water, bring our brush size all the way down, bring the strength all the way up, and we'll give it a quick click right where uh, all of these oil pumps connect to the ground. And then the only thing that we might also do here is add a few buildings over this way, so I think we'll grab one of these and I don't think it matters which way it faces, but we'll get this right alongside of our truck station as well as uh, two of these buildings. Alright, so I think we're going to leave this area off like so. Uh, we'll come through with our terrain tools, smooth out these edges that we flattened out earlier, and I think here we might give a little bit of tree cover just to maybe blend this a bit more. So here's what we end up with. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, but I think it does fit quite nice sort of right in this area. We have our trucks starting to go out. We have this starting to produce at uh, its maximum rate. I'm not too sure why the transport says 0%. I think that's just because none of it has reached its destination quite yet. But over here, this one's doing quite well. And then hopefully once our trucks start coming down this way, uh, we'll start to see this ramp up. All right, so now that we have our fuel line set up, that will eventually be two uh, maxed out fuel lines coming to the cargo hub. And I think that should be good since fuel really isn't too high of a priority in a lot of these cities. Uh, usually they're like the fifth or sixth resource, so that's usually uh, less in demand than some other areas, but there are still plenty of other resources that we still need more of across the map. Largely, probably uh, food, tools, and then machines and goods, especially machines and goods, because those are the hardest resources to make in this game. Alright, and so with that, that's going to be all for this video, so if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions or feedback, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.